I've discussed privacy and avoiding spyware a lot on this channel already, but there is a physical piece of spyware that exists in most personal computers today, and there really isn't much of anything that can be done about it. I am of course referring to Intel's management engine. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this, essentially it is a separate CPU that is embedded within the south bridge of all Intel's processors chipsets that are manufactured in 2008 or later. This CPU, as the name implies, has management capabilities over the primary CPU that you do all of your general computing with. The management engine has elevated privileges that give it full control over your computer and all the data that is going through it. It has full network and memory access and runs proprietary, signed, closed source software at ring zero, which runs independently of the BIOS, main CPU, and the platform's operating system. And there is very little that can be done to mitigate or disable the Intel management engine. Even if your computer is shut down, the Intel management engine will continue functioning so long as it is plugged in or has access to battery power if you're running a laptop. It also runs its own proprietary OS called Minix, which again is closed source and everybody with access to the source code is bound by a non-disclosure agreement which prevents them from giving any specific details about what the software, firmware, and hardware of the chip itself does. I guess I should mention that Minix is based on a free and open source license. I believe it's one of the BSD derivatives, but there's non-free blobs within the one that is running on the Intel management engine, uh, which is the part that we really have the concern about. And to get into more of the specifics about what Minix and the Intel management engine are capable of, it can bypass firewall configurations due to its dedicated network configuration. It can't be scanned by any type of antivirus due to its low level of operation within your system. It can shut down or power off your main CPU and it has full access to your keyboard input, display, network communications, and the files on your hard drive. Even if you encrypt the drive with strong encryption, the keys are going to be recorded by the Intel management engine whenever you unlock your files. And when you are viewing your files, the management engine would have access to the plain text files there, because of course, if you are viewing the files in plain text, then that means that the CPU has access to them, and thus the Intel management engine as well. Now, you would think that something like this is a major security vulnerability, and you would be correct. However, Intel has decided to rely on a security strategy that has long been rejected by security experts and even novices alike, which is security by obscurity. Now, the principle of security by obscurity is that if end users and hackers are unable to view the source code or the structure of a system directly, then it is more secure from their attempts to hack it. This obviously doesn't make any sense though, and you don't have to be a security expert to understand why. Take something like Microsoft Windows, for example. The source code to it is also proprietary and thus follows the same model of security through obscurity. Yet there are far more viruses and vulnerabilities in Windows than in any other operating system especially if we were to compare it to something like Linux, which is almost entirely open source. It's something that anybody can view, and so as a result, there are fewer viruses and vulnerabilities within it. Or take iOS as another example. Nobody has access to the source code of that, except for people that are working at Apple. Yet with every release of iOS, there are vulnerabilities that allow remote code execution on the devices. A person who picks locks does not need to know how the lock is designed in order to pick it or to be able to destroy it. So security through obscurity is really just a false sense of security and not actually making you more secure in any way. 
So whenever you make your source code closed source, you are betting that the small group of people who you gave the access to are better at finding and patching the security holes than the entire rest of the world. This position is foolhardy, arrogant, and a disservice to the end users of the product. And this also isn't just a theoretical problem. It is one that has already been exploited. Several vulnerabilities have been discovered in the past few years that take advantage of the Intel management engine as an attack vector. And there is likely many computers still vulnerable to this bug since the patch can be somewhat complicated to apply for some end users. It's not really a patch that just comes with any old system update. It's more of a firmware patch. And if you have any more novice users, possibly your parents or grandparents, go ahead and ask them if they even know what firmware is. Chances are they don't. And if an end user doesn't even know what firmware is, I'm sure you can imagine that they would have a very difficult time with trying to patch it. Not to mention that even if you are a user that can patch your firmware without too much trouble, the patched firmware is still closed source. So there is no way for us to verify in an independent or a third party way whether or not Intel has actually fixed the vulnerabilities this time. All we can really take is that they promised that this time it is fixed. And not even the Alphabet Boys feel confident in Intel's patches because the NSA and other government agencies have requested that Intel chipsets, which they will be using for their purposes and operations, be specifically built with the Intel management engine disabled. Now this deal was made exclusively with the US government and you know their particular agencies and naturally, it got very little media coverage, and it's only available to the Alphabet people, not to us free citizens. So far, I've mentioned Intel several times, but before you take this as an opportunity to run out and buy a bunch of AMD CPUs and join Team Red for the rest of your computing career, you should know that AMD has the same thing which they have built into the motherboards called AMD's Platform Security Processor. AMD's PSP gives similar levels of access to the Intel management engine and has similar vulnerabilities come out in the past. So I want to really hammer home the point here that this is spyware and vulnerabilities that are present at the hardware level. And all forms of mitigations from securing your network to your browser to your OS, they're all irrelevant to a foe that has access to these management engines, mainly Intel and bioluminescent government agents through the Patriot Act. But even then, because it is code that is operating within the CPU and has the ability to control everything going on in your computer, and there has been vulnerabilities in the past, it is pretty safe to assume that there could very likely be a zero-day exploit already out there that some hackers may be using for nefarious purposes in secret. So as long as you are using a system with an Intel management engine or an AMD platform security processor, the rest of your security measures are useless because these processors compromise all forms of security that are running above them. The only way to really mitigate this type of hardware-based spyware is to either use a computer with an older model CPU that came out before Intel's management engine or AMD's platform security processors were created. But of course, if you use much older hardware, then you might not be able to do all of the things that you want to do on your computer. Or you could use one of System76 laptops where they have successfully disabled the Intel management engine without actually compromising the functionality of the CPU. 
Or if you're a bit more knowledgeable, you could try to disable the management engine on a regular consumer grade laptop yourself. Just note that doing this uh, could cause the new laptop you bought to become a very expensive paperweight. But if you manage to pull it off, removing the management engine and then core boot your laptop, you can then finally enjoy a true Libre computing experience as computing was meant to be.